is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and good times if you like the Microsoft Surface Pro, the new model, but you just couldn't afford it. If it was just several hundred dollars too much here, here's an alternative. This is the HP Spectre X2, the 2017 model, which really, I swear to God, wins the, the award for most improved tablet ever. The Spectre X2 existed before, but it was only Intel, Intel Core M CPUs, stopped at a full HD display. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't, wow, awesome. Now, they've really gone for parity with the Surface Pro, the latest generation, at a much lower price. This is a configuration that is sold at Best Buy and on HP's website, and it's $12.99. Core i7 with Intel Iris Plus 640 graphics you get. Fast SSD inside PCIe, 8 gigs of RAM to 360 gig SSD, a little unusual size there, a 3000 by 2000 pixel display, so that's slightly higher resolution even than Surface. It's pretty impressive stuff for $12.99, and as usual, it's a clone of Surface, so it's got the detachable keyboard, pretty strong magnet, come on, come on, there you go. Look like a familiar design, sure it is. Um, guess what though, the keyboard, this pen are included for the price, no extra spend. So what's the catch? We're gonna find out now. So here it is, one attractive looking and unsurprisingly weighs just as much as the Surface Pro tablet. 1.7 pounds, approximately 775 grams or 2.5 pounds and 1.26 kilograms with the included keyboard. The included keyboard, that's always a good thing, isn't it? And Thanks to Microsoft, we now feel special when we actually get a keyboard in the box. The whole package here starts around 1149 in the U.S. with a Core i5 with Intel Iris 640 graphics. Did you know that was a thing? Usually it's just the Core i7 that gets that. And then there's the Core i7 that we have here. So, the keyboard, let's talk about that first. It is obviously very similar to the Surface type cover, and Dell has done the same thing. Everybody's copied this Lenovo, and it's very nice to type on. Some people will probably like this better, though the Surface doesn't have that much flex. It has a little bit of flex. This is metal, and it's very rigid. The deck is exposed metal, a little cold to the touch, in fact, and it's HP's oversized trackpad here. Now, HP's been doing really good trackpads, it's particularly on the Spectre line lately. This one, this Elan trackpad, it's just okay. It's not as good as the Mac-like, Surface-like, Spectre trackpads I've become used to on the X360 models. It just seems like the, it's a little too fast to surface, so there's a little lack of control, but there's all sorts of software customizations you can do on the upside, which is nice for palm rejection when you're typing and two-finger gestures and all that sort of thing too. And the pen is included, yay, and there's this goofy little pen loop over here that holds the pen. Same pen that comes with the Spectre X360 models, Entrig technology inside. It's a two-button pen, uses a quadruple A battery that goes inside of it, lasts up to about a year or so. Pretty decent pen. We'll talk a bit about that later. So, no Alcantara, no weird rug-like finish or anything like that. This is kind of a grippy, rubbery, cleanable thing. So I think a lot of people like that. Maybe it's not quite as pretty, but it goes very well with the body of the tablet, which looks a lot like, not, I'm not surprised, the Spectre X360 line. It's got that same kind of gunmetal look. They call this ash, silver, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And we have the gold contrast here. So that's in the kickstand. So the kickstand is, what, this is what HP's been doing for a while now. They have a stainless steel kickstand, and it's like so. So this is an interesting idea. Why have that whole plate of metal there if you don't really need it? It functions quite well as it is. Happens to recline to that familiar 165 degrees, like so. So it does the job. Functions as a nice little handle, too. I actually sometimes hold it like this. It, it works pretty well to do that. And it's fairly stiff and rigid, so on the desk at a variety of angles. It just stays there, which is nice, whether you're writing or drawing or whatever. There's that. On the body, we don't have a lot of ports, which isn't unusual for Windows tablets at all. They typically don't have a lot of ports. They don't have room for much. You get two USB-C ports, one on each side. This is Gen 1, so it's just regular USB speeds. It does support display port, so if you want display port, all, and all manner of little USB-C hubs out there that give you Ethernet, more USB type A ports, and all that sort of thing. So. <laughs> the good part is it's forward looking. The bad part is, okay, here we go again, just USB-C ports. But, you know, HP, they like to give you a lot of tchotchkes in the box. They make you feel good when you buy a premium product. Let's take a look at that. So inside of HP's usual chocolate covered 
colored specter box here, you get, well, not surprisingly, a charger here. And this is, a, you know, the usual MacBook kind of clone thing. And this pulls out. So guess what? Unlike any MacBook Pro these days, the extension cable is still included. So if you need a little bit of extra length. Uh, the bad news is it's not particularly a whole lot longer there, but it's a little bit of versatility if you need some more length. It's, it's not inconsequentially long. It's about six feet long just for this section of it. And that plugs into one of those USB-C ports. So one of them is going to be used by the charger if you do need to charge. Also, we have a USB-C to USB-A adapter in the box. Good time. So when you take it out of the box and you go to use your most favorite USB peripheral, like maybe a hard drive to restore a backup from another computer that you're upgrading from, well, you can do it without running to the store again. And of course, you get the pen, you get the keyboard in the box. So granted, this is not an inexpensive product, and the Spectre line is HP's top of the line set of products, but it's hard not to keep talking about Surface Pro because it's an obvious clone of it, it's an obvious competitor, just like the Dell Latitude that we recently reviewed. So we will have a separate SmackDown between this Spectre X to and the Surface Pro 2017 model, so stay tuned for that too. So we'll try not to focus too much on the Surface Pro here. So it may not be cheap, but it is pretty value-oriented compared to some of the competitors out there. The Dell XPS 2-in-1, in fact, is still quite expensive too if you're looking for a 2-in-1. The base model is actually a Core i5-7360U, and it's not a CPU that you see very often, and that has Iris 640 Plus graphics. And the model we have has the Intel Core i7-7560U, again with Iris 640 graphics. 8 or 16 gigabytes of low-power DDR3 RAM. It's your choice. Soldered on. This is not the kind of product that's going to be something you can open up to service, so you order it the way you want it. It's 100 bucks extra if you want to go to 16 gigs of RAM. PCIe, NVMe, SSDs inside, and you have your choice of a variety of capacities. Uh, the unusual 360 gig capacity, ours is an Intel drive, and that's what we have, the 360 gig. You can get it with 512, you can get up to one terabyte of storage. There is a micro SD card slot, it will derange you. It's one of those little, you need a SIM pokey tool kind of thing. You poke it and then the drawer pops out and you can get to the SD card. So it's not for quick swapping in the field. If you're a photographer, that's going to be kind of annoying. So you're going to swap cards all the time. But for somebody who's just looking to permanently or semi-permanently expand storage, that is not so miserable. There's a 5 megapixel webcam up front, and it supports Windows Hello, and it works, and it's pretty darn quick. Generally speaking, I've had good luck with the Spectre X360 cameras, and this one seems to work just about as well. Intel 8265 AC Wi-Fi, which is Intel's latest and greatest, and that has Bluetooth 4.2. So it's a well-appointed little product. The display supports touch, obviously. It's a tablet, plus the included pen and trig pen. Now, you can use... The new Surface Pro pen, if you want, or you can use the new Wacom Bamboo ink pen. I've tried that. I've tried HP's pen. I, I like, the, on this particular display, the Wacom Bamboo ink pen the best. The new dual protocol pen that works on both Ntrig and Wacom AES displays with the press of a button. It, does, it has the least line jitter, and it's quite sensitive. The new Surface Pro pen is good in terms of initial force of activation, just like the Wacom pen, but is a bit more jitter from my tests. And the HP pen is fine in terms of jitter, but it, it requires more pressure to activate. So now we're going to test out Photoshop here, and I'm going with a 3000 by 2000 pixel, 300 dpi canvas, and glaring white. So here's a couple of different pens. Here's the, the one that's included, the HP pen, and works pretty well. Now I can see a bit of latency. I'm not even going to bother slow mowing this because I can see that with my own eye. It's not bad. It kind of reminds me of about Surface Pro 4 level when it comes to the pen sometimes lagging just ever so slightly. It's pretty subtle on there. So let's try out our diagonal lines. The slow diagonal line jitter test. That's the HP pen. It's pretty jittery. Now let's try out the Wacom. Bamboo ink pen. This one's 70 bucks. You can get this at Best Buy and other places. It just came out. Notice it's better. And the initial force of activation is much lower. That's why I'm getting darker lines because I'm pressing as hard as I was with the other pen. Now I can just use the pen's own weight and it just barely makes a mark on it. So it's a pretty nice experience. We're not getting any tilt here. I suspect that we never will get tilt. I think that's going to be a surface only thing for now. That's pretty good. New Surface Pro pen right here. Also has a very low initial activation force requirement and 
a little more jitter though than with the Wacom, but it's pretty good too. So I would say any of these is actually better than HP's own pen, which still seems to be kind of like the last generation pen technology. The display itself is really quite gorgeous and it has Intel standards graphics drivers so you can change the power plant settings and stuff like that if you want it to look a little bit brighter because it has that dull down the whites power management thing to try to reduce power consumption a bit. It's 400.5 nits of brightness. That's pretty darn bright. Granted, there are brighter products out there. Surface Pro, here we go again, but that's more than bright enough for most people. Obviously, it's glossy, so there will be some glare involved, but it's, it's not a hideous level of glare. It covers the full sRGB spectrum and 76% of Adobe RGB. The color accuracy on this is pretty darn good. You can see on screen here that that's a pretty good Delta E score. So all in all, it's a nice looking display. 2.0 gamma is a little low, okay? The white point is unusually high, but it calibrates up really nicely. The viewing angles, this is IPS, are good, but they're not fantastic. I do notice a bit of off angle color shift and brightness shift with this. And for a tablet, you, you hold it in all sorts of positions. You always like it to have the best viewing angles from every angle possible. So that's a little bit of a ding on that. The tablet has front facing speakers. How intelligent and rare is that, right? And they're near the top too. So if you're holding it near the bottom, you're not gonna block them. They sound, for a 12-inch tablet, pretty good. A little on the tinny side. That is, there's not a lot of bass, but really not that bad either. It's, it's decent enough. I wouldn't mind watching YouTube videos using it, for example. For performance, you're looking at pretty good specs here, aren't you? Especially for the price, and it does perform nicely. In fact, if you look at the Core i7 model that we have here, unsurprisingly, it does a little bit better than a Core i5 Surface Pro configuration. Doesn't beat the Core i7 Surface Pro though, it's a, but it's about on par. So how about heat and thermal throttling? Now you can see here when I'm playing Civ 6, Intel XTU doesn't report throttling, but you know what I noticed that the baseline CPU speed as I play after about a half an hour just gets a bit lower and a bit lower. So I, it might not detect it as thermal throttling, but obviously they're doing something in the firmware and power management settings and to keep this running a little bit cooler. And I noticed that it actually felt a little bit slower than playing on the Core i5 Surface Pro. So there you have it. There's something going on here. So it may not be living up to its full potential. Now, obviously the benchmarks are pretty good on it. I, it's just long-term pushing and kind of use. And you will start to hear the fans. I mean, clearly, if you're playing Civ, you're going to hear the fans on this, but it doesn't get that loud. And it exhausts through the top air vents, so it's not going to be blowing at you. But it gets burning hot. Screen is okay. It's hot, but it's not burning hot. But when you're playing games like Civ 6 here, it is. You don't want to even touch it back here. So it well goes over human body temperature by 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Performance otherwise is where we sh we would expect it to be from the specs. And this is a 15 watt dual core CPU. It's basically got the brains of an ultrabook inside. So in the, okay, something's got to give somewhere. Something has to be wrong part, right? How about battery life? Well, HP only claims eight hours of battery life. Now they do tend to have more sane battery life claims. So that's part of it. They don't say things that you only achieve by having brightness turned completely off and doing almost nothing with the product. It has a 41.5 watt hour battery, which is a pretty good sized battery for a tablet and about competitive with a, an Ultrabook battery. So for cell, it's not gonna be that bad in other words, folks. It supports fast charging, by the way. They claim up to 50% charge in 30 minutes. I've seen it do about 40% charged in 30 minutes, which is pretty darn impressive. By the way, that fast charging does generate some heat. So that's one of the times you're gonna hear, hear the fan kick on. If you got the battery almost depleted and you plug this in and charge it, you're gonna hear the fans more often until it gets power up. It's got a 65 watt charger, which is interesting. Really a 45 watt charger should do with this thing, but they include the 65 watt charger. It uses up one of those USB-C ports when you are charging it. So how long does it last us? Now at 40% brightness, which is actually pretty darn bright and a little brighter than I would run it. Doing a mix of productivity apps and some Photoshop work of editing a few photos, doing some paintings, a little bit of coding on it. I've been averaging about six hours, which is not bad, it's not stellar. It's not awesome, obviously, like the new Surface Pro, but not, not too bad either. When you consider you're saving a lot of money compared to Surface Pro, it could be tempting. 
So that's the HP Spectre X2 2017 edition. And there's a lot to like here. Really a pretty attractive design, slim, light, high resolution display, good specs inside, a pen, pen trig pen that's pretty decent and well, better if you can go out and get the Wacom Bamboo ink pen to use with instead or the new Surface Pro pen. A uh, few challenges though, the battery life is not stellar and the heat and the, the fan noise usually isn't that bad. First couple of days you're going to hear it because it's going to be working on indexing and doing Windows updates, but the heat is pretty profound if you're pushing it hard and it makes it feel a little bit like the last generation because new Surface Pro just kind of upped the ante a bit because now, you know, that one runs so cool and so relatively quiet. In fact, there's even fanless Core i5 models out there that this still feels a little stuck in the technological past where we couldn't control those things. And granted, it is a hard thing to control, but then again, you're spending many hundreds of dollars less. So, hey, for that, you know, it might be worth living with those things. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid. Oh, hey, and we're on Patreon too. So if you like this vid and you want to help us out, check out the link below.